Welcome to Digital Asset News. My name is Rob. And today, the story, which is not shocking to me, is that unfortunately, Genesis, the lending platform under the, the umbrella of DCG or Digital Currency Group, is going to go through bankruptcy. And on top of that, uh, another one of these subsidiaries, Coindesk, is up for sale. So let's just jump right in. So unfortunately, Genesis, lending platform for uh, DCG or the Digital Currency Group, going through a little bit of what we call Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And just so you know, DCG Group, uh, not only do they own Genesis, they own Coinbase, which I'll talk about in a little bit, Foundry, which is one of the uh, largest Bitcoin mining operations in the entire world, and also Grayscale, uh, of course, the famous one of Grayscale, which is for uh, people get uh, exposure to Bitcoin through uh, the Grayscale platform. Now, unfortunately, I did a uh, poll, which is kind of, kind of uh, odd timing, yesterday morning. And I just asked the question, if Genesis files bankruptcy, will this mini bull run continue? And people, I mean, as far as like 2,000 votes, uh, well, no, bull run will cool down. We saw a little bit of a cool down uh, after we saw this information. And I'm not going to go over this in detail. It's something that uh, really shouldn't surprise anybody. Uh, Genesis plans to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And uh, they'll be going through that process. And we've actually covered this uh, weeks ago when they uh, retained Moelis and Co. And once you get uh, that investment bank involved into everything, then you just pretty much go into Chapter 11. It happened with Voyager. It happened with Celsius. And not surprising, here we are with Genesis. And then on top of that, unfortunately, to note, is crypto media outlet Coindesk taps bankers for potential sales. So again, this has uh, been a been uh, validated. Coindesk, a crypto-focused media company, retained investment bankers at Lazard to help it explore options, including a partial or full sale, according to its CEO. And again, if we're going to see the pillars, Genesis going to Chapter 11. And uh, usually in, in the crypto sphere, things don't really aren't coming back from Chapter 11 in a very expeditious fashion. So uh, let that one just uh, crumble. Coindesk is going to be sell, sold off if it doesn't go through Chapter 11 as well. And we're just left with Grayscale and Foundry. Now, if Grayscale goes down through a Chapter 11 or something happens, uh, expect some major problems. Grayscale owns roughly 3% of the entire circulating supply of Bitcoin. And that is under the assumption that they actually own all that Bitcoin. So we'll see how this all plays out. And uh, hopefully it will... Uh, uh, not be too awful. I'm not saying that it's going to be. I'm just saying that is what it is. But right now, if you take a look at the market, we actually bounced above one trillion. We had uh, gone below that. Bitcoin's hanging around there like a negative 2%, Ethereum, the same thing. So not like it's like the big sell-off and all. The market is actually quite resilient, which is good for some people like Peter Thiel. And this is our next story, which I hate to bring this to you, but this is just the truth. And I like to talk about these things because it lets you see the mindset of people in the space and how ridiculous some of the narratives are. So this is just released uh, yesterday, uh, late at night. Peter Thiel's Founders Fund made more than a billion offloading eight years of crypto investments just before the markets soured. So what does this mean? It means they dumped on you. Not surprising, everybody dumps on you. And you need to get that and understand that's what's happening. So here's the story, Morning Glory. One month before a billionaire venture capitalist Peter Thiel raved about the advantages of Bitcoin during a speech at a Miami conference, that was the Bitcoin Conference 2022, his VC firm Founders Fund had already offloaded an eight-year bet on crypto. Hey, better late than never, right? Crypto was one of its core positions. By March 2022, the firm had generated $1.8 billion from selling out the vast majority of its crypto holdings. Now, remember, in November 2021 was its all-time high. It had slipped from there moving into 2022, but they did a pretty good job, honestly. I mean, I have to give it to them. Uh, that was a good time to offload. I mean, they didn't hit the top. Uh, who does? But they did a pretty decent job of uh, taking some profits, and they did massive profits at uh, people's expense. And I can't blame him. I'm just saying that's just what it is. In April, at the Bitcoin conference in Miami, Thiel made no mention of his fund's massive crypto sell-off. He also didn't waver in his support for Bitcoin. During a speech, he said, we are at the end of the fiat money regime and added that Bitcoin was undervalued but has every potential to replace gold. 
Uh, San Francisco-based Founders Fund first bought in Bitcoin in 2014 when traded under 1,000 and increased its holding over the next eight years. So look, I'm not going to demonize Peter Thiel for coming up there and, and saying exactly what he said at the uh, conference. You can take a look at that and go, well, that's very disingenuous. It's a good point. You can argue that point. But uh, we have to be adults. And we have to understand that uh, the diamond hands narrative and holding for everything, like you can do such things and you'll probably do quite well. But if you're under the disillusion that no one is going to sell or dump on you, I'm here to tell you that Santa Claus also isn't real. I hate to say it, but that's just the, the truth. Also, there's a chart I like to take a look at. It's called whale shadows. And whale shadows is a great way to take a look at uh, things that are being moved around as far as Bitcoin. This is from lookonabitcoin.com, 100% free site, link in the description. High quality charts, very good stuff. And what it's going to show you is this. Notice one thing here that if I tap on the four to five year mark, we've done this many a times, I just like to do this, is that you'll see that after four or five years, this is when Bitcoin has moved from a dormant wallet that's a nothing for four to five years. And you'll notice that during the all-time highs, that's when Bitcoin gets moved the most. It happened here in 2017. It happened around here in uh, 2019, when things were going up. And of course, it happened here <laughs> in 2021 as things started to take off. So I will just preface it with this. Just because things are moving your Bitcoin doesn't mean you are selling your Bitcoin. All this says is that you're moving from one wallet to another wallet. But I will tell you like this. I got a couple of uh, cold storage wallets. And if they were sitting around for four or five years and then all of a sudden Bitcoin hits its all-time high, I'm not just going to, you know, for funsies, just start moving things around. The only reason I'm going to move it is to either pay somebody or to transfer to an exchange so I can sell it. So also on top of that, let's just get rid of the four to five years. How about the, the five to seven years, the, the real diamond hands? They wouldn't do that. Ah, shoot, they do. So they'll dump on you too. But what about the seven and nine year players? They, ah, they do. That's a bummer. And you can see right here is starts to go up, they, they start to move things around. Not saying that they're selling, but whatever. But what about the ultimate diamond hands? And they, ah, man, they did it again. So again, uh, just be aware, just understand that it's an investment. Nothing to cry about. It's just these are the things that are happening and these are the things moving forward. So let me just think about that in the comments section. And then we'll finish up with some good news because look, I still believe in crypto and digital assets. I believe it has a long way to run. I believe it's going to change the world. And uh, here's an example of that. The National Australian Bank becomes the second Australian bank to build a stable coin. Not a central bank digital currency or digital coin, but a stable coin. The stable coin will launch on the Ethereum and Algorand blockchain. And yes, I'm using the uh, Coindesk as a reference. Hopefully they uh, find their way out of that sale and they can retain these nice people. But here's what's happening. The National Australian Bank, or NAB, created a stable coin called AUDN, which it aims to launch in the middle of 2023. The purpose is to allow its customers to settle transactions on blockchain tech in real time and can be used for things like carbon credit trading, overseas money transfers, and repurchase agreements. The stable coin will launch on the Ethereum and Algorand blockchain. And that is why when we talk about all these different products that are out there, I'm not smart enough to figure them all out, but I just take a look at the base layer. Where are things going to be built on? Probably some layer ones or layer zeros, like a Cosmos, like an Ethereum, like an Algorand, like a Cardano, like an Avalanche, like a DOT, somewhere around there. And they can just spin off from there. So that's why I like these types of plays and just makes sense to me. And then to, uh, to finish up, uh, the NAB is only the second Australian bank to do so. The New Zealand bank teamed up with Fireblocks and they minted a stable coin, pegged the Australian dollar as well. And that got me thinking about stable coins. How much is, is a thing being transferred and, and uh, all the different uh, transfer of value? And I tweeted this out this morning. And I, and I have some reference points here. So Zelle, this is actually from Zelle's website and you can click on the link. Uh, I'll, I'll actually put this uh, in the description so you can verify this, but this is right from Zelle's website. They've done, as far as transferring a value back and forth, $1.5 trillion since 2017. Now, I understand that some of you don't understand what Zelle is. It's just a bank-to-bank -bank transfer app, and it works out pretty well here in the States. Might be globally, I'm not for sure. Uh, PayPal has done uh, $1.14 trillion uh, as of 2022. So that's just an estimation. It was actually below $1 trillion when the article was written, but I believe it's actually uh, $1.3 trillion. But again, 
uh, linked the uh, reference right here uh, in the tweet. And stable coins did 8.1 trillion, which is in the last 12 months. And again, this was actually data that we can pull from uh, the block. And we took a look at uh, the last 12 months. And you're gonna see that stable coins did a lot, actually, 461 billion, 466 billion. And this is the on-chain volume of stables, shows the sum value of all transfers on the Ethereum blockchain grouped by token. And there is quite a bit of that. And also, uh, just so you know, we did the, uh, the NFA, uh, not financial advice team up where it was me guy from coin bureau and ben from into the cryptoverse and we went really deep into this question about stable coins how they will affect crypto uh, which ones could potentially be the winners which ones could be the losers and that was a a, a great show i really like doing the show and uh, there's a link in the description you can watch the whole video we talked about that we talked about a potential 10-year bear market we talked about which centralized exchanges and why we use those centralized exchanges and what we do after we purchase and a host of other things. So I'll link that video in the description. Check it out. It was a really value packed, lots of information. And that's it. So look, that's it for today. If uh, you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. That helps with the YouTube algorithm. Consider subscribing. All things we talk about are very time sensitive and we do this every single day. But that is it. So thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate you. And I'll see you on the next one.